So for those of you who know, I've got an AX-15 here that I've mated to a Ford bell housing and to the Ford Dana 20 transfer case. It's an advanced adapters kit that I got through Tom's Bronco parts. One of the parts of the kit is a bracket to shift your Data 20. There's a bracket that I'm going to be showing you in a second, and it requires a bolt to the side of the AX15 here, which needs an M8125. Unfortunately, I do not have one of those. These are great, by the way. Thread checker, not sponsored. Normally, the kit actually comes with everything, so I'm surprised that's not there, which probably means I lost it. But anyway, you need an M8 one and a quarter pitch, thread pitch there. That goes on like this. That goes on like this. You're supposed to use the sort of not cast piece that comes in the after 66 Broncos. I shaved this down to make it work, basically. So I don't know if it's gonna actually reach or not. We're gonna find out right now. I wire brush this, hopefully this will break free with relatively little harm. Okay, there you go. Good. So let's see if we can get those aligned, and we can. All right. All right, now that that's installed, I just want to run it through its paces. You can see there's a, um, there's an interference with the shifter, obviously. Okay, so the only other question remaining with this is whether or not this will clear the tunnel, and it's gonna be tight. But I have a one inch body lift. Uh, I may need to like actually put all this, put the body onto this. I don't know. I don't know if we'll figure that out now or not. So that solves the issue of the transfer case. I don't know how you guys manage remembering stuff, but I have like a car list. So I, I just have a shot running list of stuff I need to buy for the Bronco, so I just put an M8-125 for TK shifter bracket. One other thing I'm noticing is that the um, this hole doesn't line up totally where the this M8 needs to go. So I probably, I don't know if it's a matter of, I can't really raise this up much more. Well, what is it in there? No, still not 100% clear of that. So I might need to embiggen this hole, just notch it up a little bit. Otherwise it works, so I don't know that there's any other issue. But yeah, that's unfortunate. And again, I don't know if it's because of the height of the studs here or what, you know. I'm just gonna take a picture of it so I can see how much I really need to take off. And then the question is, do I wanna blow up pull out the torch and do this now. I absolutely suck at using oxyacetylene, so try not to laugh at me, okay? Guess I'm gonna need a new shifter, huh? Fast forward a couple weeks. Um, I wanted to stop right here and just do a safety moment. I, I'm not really sure what happened. People ask me what happened. I'm gonna show you a slowed down version of that right now. And you can see I'm putting heat into it and then pow, in a flash, you get white sparks and then flame. On the floor, this piece here, which uh, right in front of my foot is like rubber, it 
was sitting there smoldering. This was smoldering, which is the bottom half of the shifter. The shifter, which has a, you can't really see, but it's just like an empty, let's see if it'll get you to focus here. Just an empty pipe. And in that sits this, this sleeve. So I believe this is like a rubber isolator, sits on here, like, and this is all one piece. So I think what happened was the heat got in there and build pressure, right? Cause it's like a tight seal and it just blew up. My cousin Arby's like, well, rubber doesn't make white sparks. So I don't know, I, re I really don't know. I think the pressure just, pressure just built up and it blew off. I don't know where the sparks came from though. But one thing's for sure, that was, that was super dangerous. I'm really, it, I wouldn't say it shook me, but it was like an awareness. Like, you really got to know what you're heating up. And, and, and what I'm going to do here when I have another shifter is put wet rags around that union to keep the heat from building up in there. But safety moment, really know what you're heating up. I was wearing PPE gloves and glasses, but if that had blown the wrong way, it could have been, it could have been pretty ugly. Anyway, let's get back to it. Well, that was terrifying. As luck would have it, I happen to have an extra AX15 shift tower. So, I think I might have a solution. I don't know. If I mount it backwards, I clear. So might mean cutting more of a hole in the uh, floor, but basically I just need to take this and bend it over this way, which I will do now, but I'm gonna take a cold rag and put it over here so that I don't get that explosion effect again. taken some oven cleaner and sprayed it in this area for the modification I need to make to the engine block to work with the whole uh, manual transmission business. Ew. Well that looks a million times better. Now if you recall the Bronco was originally an inline six motor. So I think this Z bar is too long. When I was over at Ryan's picking up the new hard top for the Bronco, I took a measurement off of his. His was five and a half inches. So, and this is seven and whatever, five eighths. So I need to cut this down and re-weld the army thingy on there. I'm just gonna look at my photos and make sure the orientation's right but uh, let's go modify this to work. Any excuse to use the plasma cutter, boys. I've got this in pieces. I've got my index mark like that. So before I weld, before I weld this, I'm going to um, Finish the work on the engine block just to make sure this length is right and then I'll burn this in. First step, 
is to pull out the bolt. Just a quick review, this through bolt holds this fixture in place. So I'm going to drill out this hole so this is not, I mean, I, I suppose I could do it this way. That's not what the instructions say. The instructions say to drill it out. I happen to randomly have a 7 16 drill bit, but this is the only drill I have that can handle it, so. Boom, shakalaka. Okay, with that in place, we can sort of get to mocking here. You mocking me, boy? So let's just say that's where it's supposed to be. So it doesn't go in that way because the hole is way off. That's closer, still kind of far away. So I think what I need to do is machine down this landing, this, this side of the block, until this goes in far enough to get me to... What I can't tell is it's supposed to like key into anything. I have the photos uh, from the instructions and it says, you know, well the hole close to the bell housing, so that's this way, that's correct. 7 16 drill did that. You may see metal casting keeping the bracket from sitting flat. If so, you'll need to grind this area down in order for the bracket to be located correctly. Once it's sitting correctly, blah, 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 blah. So there are definitely some better photos online. Okay, so that this is much longer, you can tell. I mean, I just never know what this thing's focusing on. So that is the right length. So now I just need to shave all this casting to get it to fit back there. So this is like, I don't know if you can see, but I've got this as flush as I can get it or want to get it. But there's still like a huge gap here with this bolted down all the way on this side. Oh, that's not good. This hole is too, too small. I just use a step drill bit, now it, now it fits, so. Well, that Z-bar length looks just about perfect. I'm gonna cut this off and weld on a longer version that will get to this holder thingy. 1.05 inches. Okay, I think we are finally ready for a mock-up. That goes there. Six, seven, sixteenth nut here. Z bar. Goes there. This looks a little tight to me. I think I need to shave about, and I left this long because I didn't, I knew I might run into problems. So I think I need to shave about just a quarter inch off of the Z bar and then it's ready. A smart person would wait for the paint to dry, but uh, I don't qualify. Big day here in Matt's garage. We installed the Tom's Off-Road AX15 shifter linkage and we installed the Tom's Off-Road adapter for the um, for a 5.0 block to a manual transmission since they don't have that, that boss. The next step is going to do the body mounts, which if you have an eagle eye, you may have noticed are already done behind me, but I kind of had to film everything out of sequence. So that'll be the next episode. Then I'm gonna put the body on the frame Make sure I have clearances, 
put the shifters back on while it's on the body, while the body's on the frame, excuse me, and then carefully adjust the uh, shifter handle to see if I like the location when I'm sitting and I'll throw a seat in there and just kind of wah, wah, pretend I'm doing it. So once that's done, then I've done all of the mock-ups I need for my drivetrain. I'm going to pull the body back off, take the whole drivetrain out, um, freshen up the looks of the transmission in the Dana 20, and then rebuild the 302 with head gasket, regasket the 302 really, it's not a full rebuild. And then uh, paint that. While that's out, I'll do the frame, you know, clean it up, paint the frame, paint the axles, Go through the axles, maybe kind of look at it, see how it's see how it's looking. Uh, reseal certainly the diff covers and all that. Then the frame will be ready, and that will be awesome. So while the frames, then I got to figure out the whole underbody coating. And okay, see, I just get ahead of myself. Let's just start with the body mounts next time on Matt's Garage. Mm -hmm.